Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video I will be talking about the techno managerial round of Deloitte. Recently one of my students gave the interview and he shared the questions with me and I'm creating this video to make you aware about the question. Okay, so before we begin, in general, the techno managerial round is mostly about your project related experiences and it will be inclined towards more technical, less managerial. but in the technical aspects also this would be more towards your real-time experiences your experiences in your project and how you have worked on your project and came into the uh, real life situations of your project okay so be aware that you have to give examples based on your project experiences and uh, uh, try to give more examples from your recent project or from past project rather than the general examples okay <clears throat> So let's begin the interview questions. I have questions in front of me and I'm also going to put the questions in the comment box. So those who are just looking for questions, they can get it from there. Uh, after the introduction, the first question was explain your project and day to day activities. Now, the intention of this question is to understand how much a particular person is doing development versus what he is doing in the uh, day to day activities, other things than the development, let's say talking to clients, talking to business stakeholders, deployments, testing, uh, other thing, cross collaborations, all those things rel uh, related to your projects, you can explain here documentation as well you can mention here so uh, you all know that salesforce is not about coding but a problem solving so try to explain the all three 360 degree view of your project and what you do typically in a particular day try to keep it very brief like you can say that okay 30 percent of my time i spend on uh, development for my user stories uh, 10 15 percent on collaboration with the uh, with the business collaboration with my team uh, testing deployments and other aspects try to make it uh, a mixture of everything okay then the next question was few difficult scenarios you have implemented recently this question can be asked in different ways like sometimes they ask what is the most difficult scenario you have worked on or sometimes they say what is the most difficult scenario you have worked on integration most difficult scenario you have worked on triggers or most difficult scenario you have worked on lwc sometimes they say uh, tell me couple of scenarios so basically they want to understand what kind of difficulties you have faced in terms of technical implementation of any of the project this can be managerial as well so this question is very common in the managerial round as well where they ask the uh, difficulties you have faced in the project implementation okay so try to explain the difficulties which are related to the development the difficulties which you face in your day-to-day -day, uh, difficulties which showcase your expertise okay so let's say you are good in the flows you can show that uh, they were facing a lot of difficulties during the uh, process automations because they were doing a lot of uh, process builders. You have converted those process builders into flow. What I'm trying to say here is those difficulties, you have to turn those difficulty into the solutions which you have created and you overcame those difficulty by your solution or the company overcame those difficulty by your solutions. Okay, so that you will be able to showcase your technical abilities as well. Okay, uh, then there was a question. Let's say there is an integration between Salesforce and SAP. SAP is sending uh, order details to Salesforce and which in Salesforce we are displaying in the LWC component. Now uh, we are not able to see any data in the Salesforce UI. How will you debug the scenario or how will you get to know uh, why uh, you are not able to display anything. So basically this is about debugging. How will you debug? Uh, because SAP is sending data and in the Salesforce we are receiving data and then displaying the starting point is SAP so the first step will be to see if SAP is successfully able to send data or not if SAP is successfully able to send data then we will be checking if this data is getting received by a middleware or not if there is a middleware okay and if middleware is receiving the data and then we will be checking if that middleware will be is sending data to Salesforce or not properly. And if middleware is sending data, but Salesforce is not receiving, then we will check that scenario. Let's say if Salesforce is also receiving the data properly via middleware, then we will see, okay, 
if data is coming to Salesforce, but we are not able to display it, then the actual debugging in Salesforce start where we will see, okay, if that data is coming, but we are not able to display in the Salesforce, then there could be some um, uh, something wrong in the way we are mapping data, the way we are displaying data or data could not be in the format on which we are looking for data could be in the wrong format or we may not have implemented the uh, catching mechanism to catch the wrong data or we might be getting some bad data. So try to break the problem into smaller chunks and start with the point one and try to see uh, the answers of each and every question and then that's how we are going to debug it. Now we will not directly start debugging the Salesforce. What if we start debugging put all the debug logs in Salesforce but see SAP itself is not sending the data. So we will go with the step by step approach in problems like this. And that is how you are going to explain this to interviewer as well. Okay. And that is how you will also debug in your real life projects. Okay. Now there is a next question. Let's say two developers are working on same class. The two developers are not aware of each other's changes through VS code. How can we avoid any conflict from happening? This is a very common scenario. It happens almost in every organization that two people are working on the same class or same flow. How will you make sure that they are not overriding each other's changes? Okay. So the simple answer is we have to implement the version control system in our instance. By version control system, we will create our pipelines and create uh, uh, our uh, deployment process in such a way that they all will be working on a different branches. So let's say if developer one is working on the same class, but obviously that change will be part of another user story versus another developer working on another user story. Try to create a different branches for it and every individual will deploy only their changes to the higher instances. Okay. And then in the VS code and in the Git, we will have the merge conflict as well if they try to do something which is not correct there will be merge conflict with the help of merge conflict resolution we can go and manually check what is wrong and then we can resolve those conflicts so version control is the answer of this question but we'll have to explain it as well otherwise people otherwise interview will not understand your intention or you might not get the full value of this question okay so try to explain it because this question expects you to explain it not just answer it okay all right then the next question was explain the recent integration scenario you have worked on so here he was expecting you to explain the whole integration how you have done that integration what authentication authorization you were doing what data load you were sending what were the trigger point who was sending data who was receiving it whether it was one way or two way try to explain this question this question was basically to get to know what kind of integrations you have done and how you have decided to use that particular type of authentication and authorization okay then the next question was can we assign multiple page layouts to a record type if yes explain how we can do it okay so when it comes to assigning multiple page layout to a record type there are three dimensions okay page layout record type and profile in this question profile is not mentioned okay so you will have to ask okay are we talking about the same profile or we are talking about multiple profile if there are multiple profile then for different profile for a same record type we can assign different page layout but if on a single profile for a single record type we'll have to decide which page layout we want to we cannot assign multiple page layout for a particular record type for a particular profile okay so if there are multiple profiles then obviously for a single record type we can have multiple page layouts depending on profile but if profile is out of the equation then we'll have to explicitly ask where is the profile in the uh, because profile is also the third pillar in this question okay so sometimes we'll have to also cross question or ask the follow-up question from the interviewer itself so to get more clarity do not just assume sometimes asking also tells the interviewer that okay this candidate understood the question properly now he's asking the follow-up question in order to be able to answer it properly sometimes i just go very fast <laughs> but uh, try to slow down if it is a bit, bit faster okay all right the next question is um, 
let's say there are 1000 users with same profile and permission set among them for 20 users you want to reduce the access for a field how can you achieve this okay now with the help of permission set we cannot reduce the uh, access okay so traditional way is we will have to create a profile where we will give the reduced access in the profile level and then we will assign that profile to every user okay and then we will create a permission set which will provide the extended access and we will provide that permission set to those additional 980 users except those 20 on which we wanted to uh, we wanted not to have them that permission we will provide that permission set to those 980 users sometimes or few candidate might say that we will use the restriction rules or any other thing to do that but remember restriction rules are very limited uh, right now okay and uh, even the criteria and from the uh, from the uh, from the options where we provide restriction rules there are very limited uh, set of uh, um, rules we can create there so restriction rules are still in the uh, you can say the phase where they are improving them so i don't think it will uh, you should rely on that go with the traditional approach create a profile with less permission and then permission set to extend the permission that will be traditional way to do that okay the next question was what is the highest limit of data you can upload through data loader so i think that is 5 million uh, so once candidate answered that 5 million there was a follow-up question if you have a huge amount of data how can you upload it so if you have to upload more than 5 million data then you have to use the bulk api 2.0 bulk api 2.0 will be able to help you upload thousands of millions of data there is no limit though there are some limits on the particular file size and particular file should not be more than one gp or something like that but it will help you upload more than 5 million of data okay then there were a couple of cross questions between the differences uh, between the data loader and the bulk api 2.0 but they wanted us they wanted to know bulk 2.0 from the candidate okay then there were a couple of very basic questions related to how do you do the story pointing how do you decide which story point to um, uh, give to a particular uh, uh, user story and how do you do the testing and deployment those couple of very basic questions but more or less these were the major questions asked by by the company in the particular interview and uh, uh, if you have any doubt on any question and uh, uh, you want me to explain it further do let me know in the comment box and i'll be more than happy to do that overall it was not a very tough interview it was still basic but then interview exp candidate experience was also not very high so i think it was for 2.5 years and that is why questions were not so difficult or not very difficult and it was still manageable so do let me know your feedback on this and i hope you know all the answers of all these questions i'll see you in the next video thank you bye bye